not a funny joke when you whisper it. Oh, it's not? Oh. No. Oh, that's right, because I'm kind of giving it away that I know that it's, yeah, yeah, yeah I messed that one up. Morning, everybody. Uh, so uh, we're back uh, live again with you. I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the pre-recorded stuff that we did. Um, uh, I'm sure JP handled all that great, uh, always does. Morning. Uh, we've we asked you guys. You guys told us that you wanted to see the uh, the 9S. So on a pad mount. So that's what we're going to do this morning. So we're going to start into our 9S pad mount site. Uh, it's going to break into three, like always. Uh, this will be the inspection part of it. Then we'll go into all the connections and everything, and then we'll do the actual testing. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. Not this one. Oh, okay. No, not that one. This one. Not okay. Can they see this one? Not yet. Oh. I mean, it'll eventually. I mean, eventually, <laughs> what is eventually? So the whole time I was in there talking to this and it wasn't, it was over there. Right. Okay. Well, there used to be. We'll fix it in post. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so uh, as usual, it'll break down. And the second part of it is where we're going to actually do all the connections and everything. And then the last part, um, we'll go ahead and do the testing and then talk about what we found there, which we did find something at this site. So, um, it'll be a good one. So, um, Beforehand, I do have a couple things I want to talk about. Um, unfortunately, and this is, uh, I, I try and tell people this when they ask me, what do you do? And, uh, and at some point in there, I, I have to try and bring in what we get involved in it is not, uh, you know, you wouldn't consider it the safest job in the world. And, uh, and unfortunately, things happen. And when I was in uh, Oklahoma City a few weeks ago at Oklahoma Gas and Electric, a young man named Chad was in a, uh, an accident and um, so uh, Chad now has lost uh, this down, these, and a large portion over here. And, you know, we talk about it all the time, and I will tell you this, at this point in my career, it is much more important for me, rather than to sell anything, is if anything that we talk about could keep someone from getting into problems, that's what, it, that's what drives me in this stuff. I'll just tell you all straight up. So please be cognizant of how end of the day, Friday afternoons, we know the time stuff like this happens more and you've got all the people that are there with him, they're gonna be involved, they're gonna be dealing with the guilt of it. Was there anything they could do? I mean, there's much more than just that person. And now his family, everyone's affected for the rest of his life. So let's just keep that in mind when we're out there, all right? Uh, let's just be real cognizant of we're not baking cookies. You hear me say that all the time. And then uh, another um, thing that I want to bring up this morning, and I'm going to bring them both up in the prayer course, is um, unfortunately, and these are the ones that are just kind of shaky a little bit because I had just talked with him a day and a half before this. Um, Scott Johnson at Baldwin EMC. Um, he passed away in his sleep. Um, Scott was a super guy. Um, he's worked with all of us here. Um, we've... Uh, we spent a lot of time down there, and uh, Scott was a, um, he not only did a great job and was the epitome of what you'd want in a meter tech, but he was just a, a great guy to be around. He always had a smile that lifted everybody up. It didn't matter how hot and how bad it was out there, and we're really going to miss him. And uh, it kind of hits you hard when you just spoke with him, you know, and you have to find out, you know, the next day that he passed away in his sleep. So um, we'll be praying for uh, both those families and, uh, and those folks. So, um, so let's start it out with a prayer this morning. And then we'll jump right into what we're going to do today, all right? <clears throat> Father, thank you so much for the time today for us uh, to learn our, our craft better. But with the news that, uh, that I just delivered this morning, we see that it's, uh, Father, the safety of getting people home to their families is what's so important with what we do. And uh, now you have a young man that's going to be affected for the rest of his life. Father, I'll be there with the, with the doctors and, and his family. Give him uh, comfort in going through what he's going to be going through and give the... Uh, the doctor's uh, knowledge and guidance on how to treat him and also his family and friends and the people involved in the incident with him. All of them uh, are going to need you right now, Lord. And now I just can't believe Scott's gone. He was just right there just joking with me uh, just a few days ago, and now he's gone, Father. So I um, do know Scott's, uh, that Scott was a, a Christian, and that does give you some. It helps some, Father, but still I'm just going to miss him. So, um, Father, I, I just lift up his family right now, all of his friends and co-workers that depended on him because he was a great guy to work with. And uh, so, uh, Father, I just uh, I lift his family up because they're, they're really needing your comfort right now. And Father, I just be with us the rest of this day. Uh, please be uh, please watching over everyone so they make it home uh, safe to their families because that's what's so important, Father, and, and these sort of things tell us that. So all of these things I ask and say according to the will of the one who paid it all, my brother Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. So, um, so as we said, uh, we asked you guys, and you guys said you wanted to do the the uh, 
Uh, episode 10 is going to be testing a 9S out there. It's a pad mount because we've done both uh, pad mounts and we've done the overhead stuff, you know. So um, this is going to be a pad mount. Is this, this the first pad mount we've done? Yes. Yeah, it is. Okay, first pad mount. So that's cool. And uh, so we'll go ahead and get started. And as I always do, I may uh, stop every once in a while to, uh, to point something out. And, uh, and uh, today we're going to uh, do a site inspection like we always do. Talk about uh, PPE a little bit. Um, we're going to inspect uh, the, the pad and stuff with it being a pad mount, so it'll be a little different this time than, than our inspections we've done before. Then we're going to assess the meter and decide what we're really testing, and then we're going to go ahead and go over the, uh, the test equipment setup. So um, we'll go ahead and uh, get it started, and I'll ask JP to stop it, and we'll point some things out as we go along, all right? Well, good morning, uh, Pyrometrics Nation. We're here at another site, and uh, we're on the, the back side here of a church. So. Uh, and now we've got a uh, different person uh, handling the equipment. So we've got Jonathan Souders here, and Jonathan is actually our senior electric field site manager. So he's, uh, I mentioned it in one of the previous uh, webinars that uh, he's actually a Browland supervisor. So we got the big dog with us out here today. So, um, so we're gonna test this. So the first thing we do is, we've been talking about this, we're gonna go ahead and do an inspection of the site. And we start out with here, we don't have a pole, we're at a pad mount. So we're gonna just talk about uh, looking this pad mount over. And the things we look for, right, John? First, we don't smell anything, right? Right off the bat, so we're we're trying to smell and see if we can smell oil, which that would be something that would make us say, "Well, wait a minute," uh, that we might report back uh, to somebody and let them know. And then, obviously, is if we cracked it open, we might find something to actually see the oil. But remember, and we say this a lot, the meter techs are the eyes and ears of the utility on a continuous basis at these sites. Okay, so they're dependent on us to give them the reports of what's going on at the site. So we might need to get a line crew or somebody else come out here to either correct it, modify it, or repair it, whatever needs to be done. But who, the person that sees these things on a regular basis is the meter tech and not the lineman. So that's uh, something that the utility companies depend on us to do. So we're going to go ahead and check out this uh, pad mount. We've talked about this before. We look to see if it's uh, cocked on the, on the pad a little bit to see if maybe it's been hit or anything. And, and usually you'll see those more where you've got any kind of driveways close or something where there's traffic going by. And a lot of times maybe somebody's bumped it with a vehicle or something and moved it. And uh, so right now it looks square on the pad, so I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, and as we walk around, we're just looking, uh, as we've done before, to see if we see any kind of, we don't see any leaking, we don't see any uh, arcing, but most of the time you'll find that on the inside. So, so far, so good. We don't see anything that concerns us. Uh, we don't see, uh, we see some ants on the outside, but we don't see on previous sites, we've seen an ant trail going inside there, so we fully expected to see an ant hill or uh, something on the inside, because we know how insects are attracted to that, uh, that real small hum and vibration. But we don't see anything there, we don't see any trails coming here. We got a little small ant hill, we don't, like we said, we don't see any trail going in and out of there, so it doesn't look like they've made, made a home up inside there. Uh, so we don't see anything there, so the first thing we'll do is, and you talk about the secondary level of security is the, is the padlock. So the padlock uh, will go past the padlock, and Jonathan will take the padlock off there, and then we'll go to the pentrel lock there, uh, and we'll use our, our, our driver right there to take that, and that is considered then the primary level of security. So when we get into that, then once you get into that, you do have to have your, your primary gloves on, and then, of course, any time you get past, you can just think of it as an, ima an imaginary line of demarcation, so to speak, right here. Once you get past that, you need to be sleeved up as well. But as long as we're just, uh, we're staying on the outside of that, and we'll go ahead and hit it with the heat gun here in a second as well, we're not going on the inside, so all we need is our primary gloves, but not actually sleeved up. So Jonathan's going to go ahead and crack the door open, and then he's going to open up the pentrel lock there. And we can see it's, uh, they've labeled it, it's 150 kVA. We don't have, we've seen on uh, previous transformers where they have more information on the outside of it. Oh my God. Where it'll say that it's uh, stainless steel uh, R temp and that, that's not on this one. But we do, they have labeled it at least on the size of it here. So when we open it up, we see, uh, yeah, we have had some, uh, it looks like we've got a, uh, a snail colony in here. Some snails have started to, uh, to get in here pretty good. So, um, but looking, uh, looking down in the bottom of it, we don't see any, uh, as we said before, we don't see anything scary in the bottom. No snakes, no, uh, which Browland uh, 
made it very clear he didn't like snakes, by the way. It's true. <laughs> it is true, isn't it? Brian does not like snakes. So uh, thank goodness there's no snake in there, so we don't see any snakes. Um, we don't see any, uh, anything else, no large ant hills or anything in that that, uh, and, uh, that uh, we wouldn't like. We also noticed that, as we've seen uh, previously, they've also put these uh, sleeves and covers over here on the terminals right here which is a, a good idea. So you'll need to remove those uh, to get in there and, and put your wraps uh, or put our flexes on in there. But right now we don't really see anything that's making us uh, think we need to report it to anyone. So, um, so, so far so good. So uh, we'll come back here in a minute. We'll actually wrap them with our flexes. We're just doing the inspection right now. You want to go ahead and uh, hit it with the heat gun and see what that says. Shooting on the spades to see if maybe anything's loose. We've got about 62 degrees on them. 62? Yeah. That B phase is about 52. Which 52 makes, on makes sense. B. It's a little bit lower and it's down in the middle. A little bit lower. Yeah. Wires are about 52, 56. It's the back of the transformer, 70. Back of the transformer 70. And those would be numbers you would expect, right, in this situation. Because actually, for where we are, it's, it's, a, it's a, a cool day, and <laughs> that number Ooh, should be pretty low. 46. 46. No one's ever accused me of being hot, so that makes sense. So, uh, so looking at that, the numbers all fall in line with what Jonathan would expect. Um, so we don't see anything so far that we feel like we would need to report back and let, uh, let anybody know about as being the eyes and ears like we say out here. So, so far so good. So if you can see in the background here, we've got actually two services on the back of here. We've got a uh, one meter here and one meter over here. So we're going to go uh, check both of these meters out and do a little inspection on them. They've got the two piece covers on them. And uh, as we've mentioned before, but we're going to say this every time in case this might be the only one that somebody sees, with the two-piece covers, we recommend as just part of the standard procedure, it only takes a few more minutes uh, for inspection purposes to take that top off. You might find something up in the top instead of just being concerned with making your connections on the test switch and then moving on. Go ahead and take that second piece, if you've got a two-piece cover, take the top off to make sure you don't have anything going on, on, on the, in the top of it mud daubers or other nests that could be built on the back side there on the back side of that meter so um so we're going to take both those off and take a look at these uh these two meter cans so let's go ahead and take a look at those <clears throat> so again we take our seal off okay So we'll take this off, bottom cover, top cover again, and do an inspection here. Uh, once again, we're not seeing anything that makes us nervous across the top. Don't see any uh, mud daubers, uh, spiders, anything like that that's climbed up in there and died. Bats, nothing crazy like that. No snakes, no critters. No, we don't see anything in there. And then when we look at the meter itself, when we take a look at the meter, we come over here on the left side and we see that this is either an 8S or a 9S meter, right? Is what it says there. And again, auto ranging 120 and then 480. Yeah. And that TA right there, it says TA 2.5. I'll go ahead and point that out. The TA 2.5, we've talked about it on the webinars there in the, at the shop back in Knoxville, is um, when we've used that training bench is, what that uh, TA 2.5 is indicative of is when you get ready to do a phantom load test, according to ANSI, that would be your full load. So if I'm doing a phantom load test on this, I will put 2.5 amps will be my full load amps. And remember, your light load is always a tenth of that. So it's going to be 0.25 amps I'm going to run on light load. And then to run my power factor test, I always make that bad power factor, which would be a really big angle which would give me a 0.5 power factor, which would be horrific if there was a customer because now I'm losing half of my money right off the top, right? Because to, to calculate my watts, which we bill on, which we usually convert to kilowatts because that's usually the rate is done by kilowatts, but we would take voltage times current times power factor equals watts. 
So when I multiply by that 0 0.5, I'm already cutting what I'm going to see my revenue in half, right? I want to see a number getting real close to 1. I like seeing numbers like 0.98, you know, numbers like that where I'm losing just a little bit. 0.5, I'm cutting it in half, so I'm losing half of my money right off the top. So that's what I use for my power factor test. So you remember using this in, in your transformer rated meters, which is what these are, because uh, we've got CTs involved in a transformer that's behind JP right now that we looked at a minute ago. So since we have that, and this is a transformer rated meter, that 2.5 is typical for transformer rated meters. So that 2.5 is my full load amps, 0.25 my light load, and then my power factor, I use 2.5 2 amps, again the full load, but I use a 0.5 power factor number. And that's my full load, power factor, light load test, that those three tests comprise a phantom load test. So that's where we get that number from. So when you look on the face of the meter, you say, you see TA equals whatever, and that's the number you use for your full load. Uh, sometimes it could be 30 amps, right, for some self-contained. So you run 30 on the full load, and then remember it's always a tenth for the light load, so it'll be 3 amps on the light load. But that's where we get that from. And then we look over here and we see that it is a Y. We look on the screen, bottom right-hand corner, and we see Y and 120 again. So this is okay. also going to be a 1. <clears throat> so if you remember one of our... Uh, it was, it was just about one of the first ones we did, we did that 8S, didn't we? That was, I think that was one of the first one. So difference being, it, this, you know, it says 8S, 9S, but you go back to the old electromechanical days, and there was a, definitely a bigger differentiation between an 8S and a 9S. The 8S has handled all the delta stuff, okay, the 9S's didn't. So it, it rolled on it as the, as the meters got better and better. They still had that differentiation of the same. It could be 8S, 9S here. So when we look over here and we see the Y over here, then that's telling us it's a 9S, right? Because we'd seen on a previous one that we did on these that you watched, we had an 8S because it was a delta. Okay, so in this case, it is a Y, so this is going to be a 9S that we're going to use here. Class 20, <clears throat> that CL20 there is class 20, means it's a 20 amp rated meter. And if you think about it, the test switches and all that are rated at 20 amps as well. So the meter for a CT rated site, for a CT site or transform rated site, it's rated for 20 amps, okay, so that meter just ran it for 20 amps. It's a CL20, okay, so anything over 20 amps is, uh, is too much. It's, you're uh, overrating, that's the meter and the test switch as well. That's why, if you think about it, and we've talked about this a little bit, on, that's why if you see on these rating factors on these CTs, they go up to four, right? It's because they can go up to four times on the primary, and then if they go four times on the secondary, they go up to 20 amps, right? Because it's always five on the secondary. So if they're able to re uh, overrate it and go four times, then you're going to end up with four times five, 20 amps on the secondary side. And remember, that's all this stuff's rated for down there. So that's why you're not going to see a rating factor of five, okay, unless they change some of the other 20 amp rated stuff down there. So that is what that CL20 is. The auto ranging we've talked about, 120 to 480 volt. So it says right there. So we, we went to auto ranging on these uh, meters so that they could handle a variety of voltages. All right, and then that TA 2.5 we just talked about. Thanks, JP. 2208Y, which makes sense because we have the one transformer where we've got the two meters. So both of them are 12208. They're both Ys, right? This one is just a 9, and this is a 5 over here. And uh, anything else that you would look for on the face of this meter, or is that pretty much it, Jonathan? Um, typically, when I walk up to it, um, for meters like these that do have the status wheel on it, I'm, I'm kind of looking at that as I'm walking around looking at it, seeing what kind of load I've got on it to, to kind of know if I'm looking at doing a, a custom load test or a phantom load test. So I hope you all got that. And uh, this is when you're experienced, like he and Brown and Nora have testing so many of these things, you walk up and look and see if I've got load on it. I mean, why go ahead and set up for a customer load test when I know I don't have any load on it, right? If the thing doesn't have any load, I know I need to switch. And we've talked about it in the webinars there in Knoxville with the training benches is, you're going to have two different tests you can perform on that meter, right? Either a customer load or a phantom load. If I don't have any customer load, then I have to provide the load with a phantom load or a load box. So then I know if I look at it and I don't have any load, why go ahead and start setting up for a customer load test? Go ahead and get hooked up and get ready and set it in the machine to do a phantom load test and then use the load box, okay? So that's a good point. So I look up, I check my status bar, see if I've got a lot of load going and that thing's moving pretty well, then I know, okay, I can go ahead and do a customer load test. Because we've mentioned before, unless the utility dictates it, 
We say we like a customer load test uh, for, uh, for number one, it brings everything into account. All of my, my CTs, my wiring to those CTs and back and everything else, whereas the phantom load doesn't. But also, uh, I, for a customer complaint, a customer load test to me seems uh, more appropriate and better when you're trying to explain to the customer because you can say, you know, I've even had, and I've mentioned this before, where a customer's, when you pull that meter out and stick it in something else to provide a load, uh, they say, well, well, wait a minute, I don't know what's going on here. Put it back in my socket, right? I want to see it tested in service. Well, that's what the customer load does. You can also leave it in socket and open up my, my CT shunts and do it right there at using my, my duct bills to drive the current. But if I, uh, if I do a customer load test, I can say I was here at 2 o'clock on Thursday. The tests are going to show that. The machine records all of that. And I can say I used your service and what was going on at your place. I didn't provide the load, okay? And uh, so for a customer complaint, the paperwork and the explanations just seem to be a little bit better as far as I'm concerned versus the phantom load. So, um, so we don't see anything that looks crazy so far, so it looks like they're going to be pretty straightforward tests. So now Jonathan's going to start uh, connecting everything up. We're going to connect. Another thing uh, that I just wanted to point out here, you'll notice uh, if, as we've done these, we see different uh, test switches, which, which has been great for us because it allows us to teach more stuff. But you can see here, this one isn't really identified that well for you, okay? It's not laid out that well. All I have is my red voltages here, here, and here in my neutral, okay? And then these, I don't have any coloration here to help me. So this is where we talk about vetting out the test switches and stuff before you get started. I know by seeing that cross piece across there, there, and there, those are my what? My shunts, right? Because anytime they have that cross piece across there, it's going to be a short stroke blade. It's going to be my shunning blade and my short now and my... My current's just going to go right through here. It's never going to go up above here. So when I short across here, then my current goes right here, right? But then when I, when I close that back in, then I get the flow that goes through the meter and back. So this must be my long one, and I can see the place there where I can put my duck bill in. I can insert the duck bill in that little cross pattern right there. So I got my shunt and my returner side by side. That's how you see them mostly. They're going to be side by side with one another. We've had some crazy ones we've shown you on some of the webinars where all of the shunts are sitting all on, I mean, excuse me, all the returns are over here on one end. But most of the time, these will be side by side. And that's why we give you the little tip on pacing the handle to the right with your voltages here, because then that'll be a short stroke here, right? And then if I did a long stroke, then I might knock them off, okay? So I don't. So you can see here that I've got shunt and return. So I've got my shut and return, I've got my voltages here. Also, when we were up here, we noticed, you can see that, you can look at this and tell, this one's probably not gonna actuate very easily, okay? This is gonna be a sticky one, and as we go forward, you're gonna find that we had some issues here. So you're gonna get a lot of stickiness, so you're gonna get to see us use some, uh, some spray stuff here, some spray products, and try and loosen some things up. But you can just tell by the coloration on there, tell that these hadn't been actuated in a while. And so you just wanna keep all that in mind, okay? Because some of the older ones, if you've seen them before, those southern states and stuff, they'll actually flex with you. When you're sitting there and you go to pull one of these open, the whole test switch will flex. And I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm watching that when I'm up inside that can, okay? So I'm just saying, it's, you know what you're working with. And this is an older test switch right here, so we know it's going to be pretty sticky. Okay, it's probably not going to actuate very well, so we're probably going to shoot it with some lube first. But you can tell by this, if we use some of those things we've talked about before, short stroke, crossbar, that's got to be my shunt, the returns right there beside it, and here are my voltages. That way we know the layout before we get in there, okay? Thanks, JP. Of course, it's a pad mount, so we're going to use our red flex rings to go around the conductors in the pad mount, right? We don't use the high volt probe like we use for overhead, and then we're going to connect up here just like we do everywhere else, connecting our alligator clips for the voltage, our duct bills for the current, and then we're going to put something right here on the face of this to, uh, to pick up our pulses. And as we've uh, seen, when you're testing with doing these Landis and gear meters, you're going to need to open up and, and open up and, and give it new potential on there because that gets the pulses started again. If you don't do that, you'll be sitting here all day going, why aren't I getting any pulses? You might be checking your pickup, how it's connected, and do all that. So hopefully when someone sees this and they understand with Landis and gear meters, the way that they're, they're built, they, as soon as they see potential and they see power to them, they will emit pulses for a certain amount of time, then they stop doing that, okay? They time out and they stop. So when you put them in a test board, right, you're in, when you first put them in the test board and they're powered up, of course they're giving you pulses. But we're out here in the field and this meter could have been here for a long time and it's not emitting pulses anymore. So we'll open up the voltage switch real quick and just get it to start emitting pulses out of here again so we can pick them up with the pickup, okay? 
as always, thanks a lot to everybody that are involved in these things. Thanks to JP and Chris for uh, providing all the information. Unfortunately, you have to listen to me up here jabbering, but if you have any questions on anything that you've seen today, please holler at us. Also, um, if you have uh, any ideas for anything upcoming, holler at us, or anything we should mention. Um, the next, uh, when we started the test on this one, I, as a matter of fact, just saw somebody vet out a bad test switch at a site that we were testing, and he did some, he took a couple of extra steps that I was impressed with. So when we're done, next week when we're going over the setup and the testing of it, I'm gonna mention what I just saw um, last week. And it was, uh, it was pretty nice the way he, uh, I mean, we're gonna show you, the test switch is another tool. You don't really think it is, but it is. And we used that test switch and we shunted and we, we had the path of the current going one way and couldn't see it another way. It really helped us pick out exactly where the problem was. It turned out to be on the test switch. So, um, so I will, uh, I'll go over that uh, next week when we're talking about the, uh, the connections because uh, that was really, he really vetted it out using the connections. So, um, so thank you all. Be, please be careful out there and God bless.